dropping in now. Yeah. Last the last tweet. It's always the last tweet. You know, we have one five minutes before, like join now I'm with the link, and then people say, "Oh, it's now," so they start clicking the link. Always. Hello, everyone. Thanks you for joining. Uh, this is the November 2023 DSC Community Call, and I've got a weird setup because I was late, and I got the camera not really blimpy and everything. So I'm just going to turn it off. You don't need to see me. Uh, but welcome to the community call and especially welcome to the uh, machine configuration team. On There's a new PM on the team, maybe not that new, but at least we haven't really seen you in the last six weeks. So can you introduce yourself, please? Um, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining. My name is Mutemo Masheke. I'm new to the PM team on machine configuration. I'm excited to be here. I work closely with the amazing, the wonderful Jody on a bunch of awesome, exciting features um, that uh, we're excited to talk about, hear your perspectives on, kind of understand, and also just like grow our community more. So super excited to uh, be with you all. And thanks for the warm welcome, Gail. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Um, so what are you going to talk about today? What are the big news? Sorry, I struggled to unmute myself over there. Yeah, so it's all um, right. You you saw that Jody didn't try to help at all. It's like, hey, you're on your own. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I know, but no, that wasn't pro now. He doesn't need any of my help. And I put this in the oh, chat, yeah. but any issues, just send it to him now. Bugs, complaints. Yeah. So even issues with teams and unmuting your mic. <laughs> yeah. Who makes this stuff? Run <laughs> another you want help. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> so sorry. Okay. Sounds good. Go so I have some slides. Oh no worries. Good. Can you hear me fine? Yep. Okay. Awesome. Um, so I have some slides that I want to share. Um oh I see Mikey. How's it how's it going, Mikey? Um so Jody, I don't have eyes on the chat, so could you help me over yeah, there I'm if there are any it. like questions? Okay, sounds yeah. good. Awesome. So I'll just share my screen. I have a PowerPoint presentation here uh, that I'll get into. Okay, is everything showing just fine? Yeah, it looks great. Okay, awesome. Thank you. So um, hello, everyone. So um, for our DSC community call today, we're going to talk about some exciting updates um, that uh, we're going to share with you all um, that provide better ways for us to um, communicate and engage with one another. And um, hope ho we're hoping that um, the news that we share creates uh, a community where there's a lot more transparency about the features that we have um, that allow more customization on tooling and quicker access to um, providing feedback to uh, the product team directly on some questions or concerns you have about like the code um, or any of the other products that we have within machine config. So I'll get right into it. So first on the agenda is we have um, a new Twitter account. Um, and so it's uh, called Azure Governance. You can check it out. We shared some updates about some uh, general ideas about machine config, and also we'll be uh, blogging and posting about some feature releases in the coming days. So it's a really great way to um, get first-hand updates from our team, easily access our MVP and customer community, which is like, uh, super active within like a couple of days of being um, available. We have about 500, almost 500 followers on the account. So it's definitely like a great way to sort of engage with our post and learn more about the community that's formed around the service. And then also have like exclusive opportunities to uh, engage with our team. We'll be posting out some like office hours that we'll be doing in the coming weeks. If there's any conversations or any feedback that we need um, ahead of time, then that would also be a great place to connect and engage. And if you see this link here, the aka.ms gov Twitter, that's uh, the link to the Twitter account. And feel free to take time now during this call to 
um, give us a follow, like some of the posts that seem relevant. It, it the account represents the broader governance um, portfolio of products that um, Azure has to help customers manage their resources more effectively. And machine config is one of the many uh, products that we have um, within that um, ecosystem. So yeah, I don't know if uh, Jody has anything to add or if there are any more questions. Um, no, I think we're all good in the chat. Okay, no, sounds good. I, I have questions. <laughs> oh. Yes. No, no, I just wanted to, can you recap a bit, you know, uh, what's governance, you know, where do you sit within governance, you know, all of those kind of things for the people that may not have followed, you know, this evolution. Yeah, so um, basically Azure governance is the um, suite of products that um, uh, Azure has that allows Microsoft's, uh, Microsoft um, customers to manage their resources um, at scale um, with speed and remain consistent with um, uh, remain consistent with regulatory compliance. Um, and so we have engines like the policy engine. We've got um, uh, the policy engine, which allows customers to um, audit states of their resources and um, take action based on those the evaluations made by those audits. Um, we have Azure Resource Graph, where customers can take a look at the full inventory of suites across their Microsoft Azure resources. Um, and then we have machine config, which is the service that uh, uh, Jody and I are the product management managers on. And basically what uh, machine config allows you is to um, conf declare author configurations for your resources and then um, apply them on your entire fleet of machines at scale, whether you're on Azure or whether you're on Arc. And so um, those are just a few of the many products we have within Azure Governance that allow customers to manage their resources at scale. Thank you. Awesome. And Jody, just feel free to jump in if there's anything that you would like to add. Conversation. Yeah, will do. I thought that summed it up really well. Only thing I would add is, um, you know, one of the things that we're really working on is um, providing more of an ecosystem, you know, around the work that a lot of you folks are already doing within DSC. So making it easier to both, you know, monitor and configure and sort of put context around some of these results as well with some of the great Azure management services like Temo mentioned. But yeah, you summed it up really well. Thanks. Thank you. All right, up next, um, our big announcement is that, um, um, as you know, the DSC community um, has set a really great example for um, our continued machine configurations, continued prioritization of open sourcing um, within the cloud, aside from providing greater transparency into the tooling that, um, uh, into the tooling that uh, you're using. Um, we believe that open sourcing is another great way of engaging in community discussions around like the tools that and features that we release. Um, and um, it provides opportunities to fork repositories for um, our customers to customize their tooling and better adapt their use case um, to better adapt our products to their specific use cases and also for customers to reflect, uh, request bug fixes and features to GitHub issues. And so Oh, it seems like my images aren't showing. So what I'll do is I'll reshare my screen and then I'll just <laughs> I'll just share the slides as they are in PowerPoint. I think we'll do it the old fashioned way. Um just hold on one second. Okay, great. There we go. My images are back. So as you can see here, um we have two uh, repositories within machine configuration um, that um, host some of the tooling um, that we have available. Um, one is NX Tools, which um, has already been released and is out there, but is just a great for, way for our customers to um, create class-based, custom class-based DSC resources for Linux and Unix management. And then we also have the machine config PowerShell module, which um, has been out as well for quite some time that allows customers to author, test and publish uh, machine configuration content. And so um, using the links that we have down below here, 
um, you are now able to view publicly uh, the code that we have available for our customers to sort of look through and see um, like the code behind the tooling that you're all using. You can create forks, as I mentioned, um, but the big uh, value add as well is that you can create issues on the repositories. So uh, I'll just open up uh, our GitHub and then you can sort of take a look at some of the um, features we have within our repository. So we have a readme file that basically goes over um, how we're sort of thinking about managing the repository. So um, uh, in particular, we wanted to call out the fact that um, at the moment, while we're not accepting contributions via um, contributions via pull requests, we are providing the opportunity for our customers to file issues using the issues feature in GitHub. Currently, our issues are closed because this repository was um, open source just Monday. But as of today, you all can take time to go in and take a look at our code and request features, file bug reports and that sort of thing. Um, the reason why this is such a major uh, update is because we haven't like publicly announced it um, because um, Jody is going to do a whole discussion and a public review um, during Microsoft Ignite where we'll go into further detail about that. And so later on, I'll provide avenues that you can use to keep in touch with us so that um, you're also able to attend um, our presentation during Ignite. So I just wanted to call out that this is a great way for us to sort of engage uh, more directly with you all and sort of understand better what uh, the needs of our community are regarding our service. So really happy that um, that this is out there now. And uh, yeah, it's really exciting. So the next thing um, I wanted to open up room for is for a discussion session and Essentially, we just have a couple of questions we want to ask you today. Um, it would be most helpful if the responses were structured around um, specifically for our customers who are using like the PowerShell module, just understanding better what your experience has been. Um, but it doesn't have to be limited to that. Um, so I'll just start off with the first question, which is for those of us who are using machine configuration, um, how are you using our tooling? How are you finding your experience? Are there any questions or sort of items for feedback that you would like um, Jody and I to address today? I don't know. I can't see if any hands are raised. So, uh, are... go ahead. Uh, sorry. So we actually abandoned machine config in favor of Azure Automation DSC. And it mm -hmm. started with, uh, first of all, that the, its documentation was pretty hit or miss about how it actually supposed to work. I created a couple of GitHub tickets and it just went nowhere. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. it seems to rough around the edges. Uh, and uh, what actually killed it is actually create a uh, help that not help the support case with Microsoft mm -hmm. is inability to pass an array instead of string to machine config and this mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. such a basic saying that I I, I, I thought that it, it's a bug uh, mm -hmm. but apparently it's just a limitation so at this point uh, the management told me don't stop messing around with this stuff it's too raw just go back to what is proven for years and yeah so we completely mm -hmm. abandoned it yeah, mm -hmm, thanks mm -hmm, Gregory mm -hmm. for the feedback. I remember we were looking at this case, yeah, earlier in the week and um, really appreciate a lot of the detailed feedback that, you know, you were able to give in your case notes. And um, we've like, uh, we've set up sort of a, a regular cadence with Mikey as well, who um, owns our documentation uh, to see how we can make some of these um, current product uh, features like a little bit more clear in terms of what you can and can't do. And then otherwise, um, you know, really appreciate the feedback around what we should be looking at as as a roadmap item. But um, yeah, hopefully we can hopefully we can work to kind of unblock this in the next um, in the coming months. Yeah, it's a big one, which is just in the chat as well that you cannot yeah. run down the different credentials. How's it going, sir? Yes, sir. 
I think there might be someone who has their mic unmuted accidentally. Maybe we can yeah, no. sort of resolve that. No, 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 you're fine. Um, but thank you for uh, for your feedback. Um, and we actually, um, towards the end of the discussion session, if um, you'd be interested, we're going we're going to have a link to a form. It's a very brief form that you can fill out where we just gather some like quick contact information and like some I a better idea of like what in particular the issues are aside it doesn't have to be this in this specific one if there are any more like um areas of growth that you 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 feel like sharing that maybe you're not comfortable discussing in an open forum like this we're happy to reach out on a one-on-one -on -one basis and have that conversation so um thank you so much for sharing that um any other thoughts um, about how you are currently using um, our service? Um, if not at all, why were you unable to uh, deploy configurations to your resources? Any issues aside from um, maybe uh, onboarding with the feature that you struggled with? Anyone, you can just unmute. Otherwise, drop a message on the chat. I just wanted to mention that. Sorry, I was not really following because I've been having camera issues and stuff like that. So I changed the camera so it doesn't flicker anymore. But um, basically, in guest config, when you create your resource, you can definitely have a string, and then you automatically have the string to uh, to pass that as an array and then use that. So if you need me to show you that, I know in NX Tools and because it's um, it's open source, so we can go look on NX Tools and I can show you exactly how you do that in a, um, in a class-based resource, for instance. Mm -hmm. but in that's meantime, a great call out. Oh, sorry, sorry. I thought go ahead, you were go ahead, done, go Please go. Yes. I oh, am. no, I was just saying that that's, that's a great call out because um, like the benefit of opening up issues directly through our repository is that um, those are triaged on a regular schedule. So we do look at those issues and we do make sure that we get them to our engineering team and sort of see um, if there's any bug fixes or any uh, feature enhancements or like documentation updates even that um, can be requested. Um, we all typically use GitHub issues to take a look at that aside from our different support avenues. So. Um, just wanted to say that that's a really great place to bring anything um, that is of concern up with us. Can we post a, a link to that repo with the issue and uh, just to make it helpful, we can post that in the, the notes. Yep. Oh, I'll put yes, the repos definitely. in the chat. Yeah. Awesome. So, Thank you. Uh, please go on, Jody. <laughs> Nope, that's a great call. I'll just put the links in the chat. OK, sounds good. This is like the screenshot. Um, and then for the link to our Twitter account as well, you can see it all here. Uh, in case I was also missing in the notes. Awesome. Thanks, Matamba. Did some, oh, did someone go off mute? That was just me. I'll go back on. Me. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Um, okay. Are there any uh, pain points with our service aside from the ones already mentioned? I'm here. I'm seeing some updates in the chat about uh, credential support as well. Um, so I'm just enjoying the conversation around some features and just wanted to keep the space open in case there's anything more folks have to say. What I've heard around the DSC community calls and you know similar events is always mm -hmm. about the credential supports. I think that's probably one of the next biggest asks. You know, how do you do that? Because mm -hmm. there's plenty of examples, you know, of DSC and people try expect this to work in the same way. And actually, when mm -hmm. they try on the mm -hmm. test or they find the information, well, mm -hmm. it doesn't. Yeah, that's a very that's a very good point. That's an active conversation that we're having on our on our end so we are working towards uh some solution that allows um credential support typically 
because a lot of our customers um, are trying to uh, use machine uh, config to um, uh, to enact a domain join. And so that's sort of like a top of mind scenario for us at the moment. There are some uh, some workarounds that we've seen so far that were sort of exploring that other people have been able to circumvent the issue by using um, Key Vault and managed identities. There's a bit of complexity around getting that running. So we're trying to support that as well within um, our existing features and sort of see how we can improve and provide credential support. But um, we'd be happy to touch base um, on sharing ways that uh, customers are currently solving that issue at the moment. But yes, that's also top of mind for us. I don't, I'm not sure, Jody, if you have anything to add on that, because I know we've talked about this quite extensively in the past few weeks. Yeah, so this is um, a committed work item for us within like our next working semester. So mm -hmm. we kind of divide our year into two like semesters um, at Microsoft. And so uh, this six month chunk is from October to uh, March. So um, keep an eye out both within the What's New page and our documentation, um, as well as uh, keep going to the community calls and you folks will be the first to hear once this um, becomes available or if there's an opportunity to try something out um, in Alpha or, a, or a more of a private preview setup as well. Um, would love to kind of get your feedback as we iterate through what the right design and experience would be. Um, but this is something that's top of mind for us. Mm -hmm. This is great. I'm enjoying this. Uh, this is super exciting. Are there any other items that people want to raise? Any issues they would like to discuss. I see the chat is going off um, and people are coming off mute, which is great. So I don't want to slow, slow down the momentum. So feel free to just go off mute. If there's anything anyone would like to add. DSCB3. What's the new? <laughs> is there any That's work good... going on? Is there any work on DSCV3 going on? Because because we've seen, so I don't know if people have seen, but there was a mini con last week mm -hmm. and um, Steve made a presentation about this V3. And then we had uh, Winget and Winget Configure with Demetrius making a presentation about, uh, you know, how Winget Configure is doing like some DSC work. And eventually they're planning as well to have um, a side by side with the DSCV3 and DSCV2, um, being able to using both of them for at least testing purposes. So, do you have any plans, or is it still in discussion, or is it still the kind of thing? Like, what's your plan? What's your approach? So, we're currently working very closely with um, Steve's team, and um, the work so far has been uh, pretty exciting. I think we'll reserve some time on this call for Steve to go into detail on that. Um, I'm not sure if Jody has anything to add, but um, I feel like that that section of the community call, I think, will be dedicated as well to more in-depth discussions about TSCV3. So it's coming up ahead for sure. You see the last. Yeah, let me. <clears throat> I'll just interject real quick since I I yeah. see DS. You, you kind of summoned me by mentioning TSCV3 like ten times. I didn't expect um, that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I did I mention it at the minicom, but I'll just I'll just reiterate one of the fine points here. Uh, so we are working closely with machine config teams. Um, so I don't think there's anything to uh, discuss specifically right now. But uh, regarding DCV3, it is ongoing development. Uh, and what I did mention at minicon is that we're targeting getting to feature complete, meaning that we shift from alpha to beta by end of Q1. So towards March, probably more closer to the end of March, and then um, hopefully we'll get to like a release candidate by uh, build, which I, I currently expect to be around May timeframe. So that's kind of like the current timeline that we're we're trying to target against. That's it. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Steve, for 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 jumping in when summoned. I feel like that that I really appreciated that personally. So sneaky. Thank you so much. <laughs> and yeah, um, my, my two of my pets are trying to oh, fight around me right now, if you can't see. Be so off of it. Oh, <laughs> oh, he leaves. <laughs> that that's the sad part about sharing your screen is you can't really see what's going on in the in the main call. So, bit of a bummer. It, yeah, it's recorded. Don't worry. 
sounds good. <laughs> um, so I guess our last discussion point, and I guess this is uh, very closely tied to the ongoing conversation we're having about just learning more about updates um, on ongoing work from our team, DSCV3 and beyond, um, is how are you all currently learning about some updates um, that uh, our team has? Um, are you having an easy time onboarding? Um, or adopting the newer releases. I know there was a conversation around um, our documentation that sort of needs some improvement. So if there's anything you would like to talk about regarding our documentation um, or just anything that you think would be helpful for you to stay up to date with um, some of the releases we're having, feel free to uh, jump in on the conversation. Okay, I'll jump in then again. Sorry. What about the, is there somewhere that you share like a tiny bit or a tiny window of your roadmap? Where's the best place to get this information? So I think what we're hoping is that in the uh, guest config repo, um, we'll start to be able to kind of have more like bi-directional feedback. So as more issues will get opened, um, it'll provide us like another avenue to um, basically like clearly communicate what's kind of on our roadmap for the semester, give people a better idea about sort of development timelines um, and things like that. Like, obviously we don't have like a perfect crystal ball, so it's hard for us to like totally predict the future there. Um, but we're hoping that the guest config module will be sort of the best place to go for updates like that. And then this call. But yeah. <laughs> and then the conferences. And then the conferences too, yeah. And our Twitter account as well is yeah. a great place where we'll be making updates. Um, I think Jody, you, uh, you may have called this out earlier, but I just wanted to iterate that the tech community blog is another great way. Um, if Jody, you could help maybe put the link in the chat for folks to sort of have access to the tech community blog where it's basically where we, the governance team just publishes all updates about um, improvements and feature releases that are happening uh, within that area. And so it's a great way to stay on top of uh, machine config releases as well. And soon we'll be updating our documentation as well to provide um, just a, a list of all the ways you can keep in touch with um, our features, our feature releases, and that sort of thing, which would be exciting. Will that be Mikey doing it? Yes, no. <laughs> Ma Mikey will be working alongside um, Jody and I to sort of keep an eye on how people are updated with the work. I just wanted to add that Corey said in the chat, uh, not being able to handle reboots with machine config is another deal breaker for us. Yeah, I think just to speak to that one, um, we've definitely heard this from other customers too. And I think one of the reasons why we've been sort of being really thoughtful about the design for this approach is that we don't want to get into a scenario where like a production server is rebooted during a time where it like basically affects the uptime of a workload. Um, so one of the things that we're approaching or thinking about is um, sort of giving you the option to trigger a reboot through uh, a policy remediation task as well. Um, so just to be transparent, we're in the design phase for this, but it's something that we're looking at. Um, Corey, I'd love to also ping you offline to kind of follow up on this to see if the ways that we're thinking about it would work um, in your environment. But yeah, that's great feedback. Awesome. Sounds good. So I wouldn't want to take up too much time from us. I just wanted to say thank you so much. Um, this is my first community call, so definitely has a special place in my heart. I'm going to copy this link over here and paste it in the chat um, so that you can all fill it out. It's just a quick survey that just gives us some contact information so that we can reach out um, and touch base with you um, on like any feedback you might have um, that you didn't get a chance to share um, during this presentation. We can sort of follow up offline to understand more what your pain points are. Um, and then we also have this link to our um, open sourced PowerShell module um, where you can open issues and 
engage with us directly there. So um, just lots and lots of updates and making sure that we're always um, engaging with one another, sort of keeping our finger on the pulse of on what the needs of the community are and how we can better meet them. So it's a really exciting time. And thank you so much for um, showing up. I'll hand it over back to Gail and uh, yeah, over for me. Thanks. Thanks for coming and welcome to the community festival. Thank you. And uh, we'll carry on with Daniel, who's got some news and he's already posted some stuff on the chat. So, Daniel, can you tell us more about what's going awesome. on there? Thanks, Gav. Yeah, we've just just had a couple of um, awesome contributions from uh, Brendan Bonnaby on the storage DSC uh, resource module. So, a support for dev drive has been added, but there's another new. Um, resource that is being added at the moment as well virtual hard disk now I realize this is also in the hyper v dsc resource module uh, but of course that resource module requires hyper v to be installed on the machine and a lot of the times you need to use, create a virtual disk without having hyper v installed so so that resource is going to add support for that we'll drop the the 6.0 um, storage dsc 6 version 6.0 preview is out at the moment we'll get the virtual disk resource in there and then release a final version probably a week or two after that once we've once we wish sure everything's settled down uh dfs dsc is another major release uh version 5 which has a lot of new features in it huge number so uh if you are using dfs dsc realize there's not that many people out there but that they do exist um yeah check out all those new features uh Make sure they they work for you if they don't report any issues into the dsc community repos for dfs dfc and, and storage dsc and as always we love contributions big resource contributions we know there's some gaps in some areas if you if you'd like to contribute or do some reviews please please get in there and do it we 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 absolutely love it and it's 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 so valuable to the community so anything you can do your contribution is valuable Back to you, Gail. Yeah, I can see a few people on the on the chat. Well, I, that during the call, that I would like to, you know, come forward and say hi. So I've seen, I saw that my, Michael Green is there. Michael, can can you maybe unmute yourself, or maybe you're in the car as you always do? I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm here. Uh, hi, I'm Michael Green. <laughs> Hello. Uh, so, so what I do you do? I'm the PM lead. I'm Steve Lee's counterpart on the PM side. So I'm the PM lead for PowerShell. And then uh, DSC is uh, one project that I have kept to kept for myself as an individual contributor. Um, so I'm actively working with Steve on DSC v3. How long have you been working on DSC, just to remind us? Well, I don't know, like decade 2014, something like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Too long to, yeah, to share, okay. <laughs> All right, so following up, we've got some events coming up in the PowerShell community. So I can see Missy, Missy is there. Hi, Missy, do you mind uh, maybe sharing about the event you represent? Sure, can you hear me? Yes, very well. Loud and clear. <laughs> Gail's nodding his head, but not, but his lips are moving and I'm not hearing anything, so. <laughs> I was muted, sorry. <laughs> So uh, the call for papers for the PowerShell Summit is open for another 15 days up until November 15th. Uh, you can get there. I'll put the link in the chat um, in a couple minutes. The event itself is going to be held. Oh, gosh, I don't even know off the top of my head. I believe it's April 8th. It starts April 8th and it's the that whole week um, in Bellevue. Yes, I am correct. Yes. Um, and I will just tell you that I took a quick glance at our, our papers and I didn't see any DSC content. So hint, hint, <laughs> it would be a good topic. So I've just dropped the link to both the PowerShellSummit.org where you can have information about the summit. And then you have the sessionized link for the PowerShell Summit uh, 2024. And it's also in the chat and you can submit your sessions there. <laughs> And I would love to see, and probably I should submit too, but I would love to see some content uh, being shared over there. And um, similarly in Europe, we have the PowerShell Conference Europe. Uh, you've got a bit more time. So manage your priorities. 
but uh, you've got until mid-December for the uh, CFP for the uh, PowerShell Conference Europe, which will be in Belgium uh, next year. And you see, I've got everything I need uh, to make the announcement. Yeah, it, it was already there from last week. You know, I just came back and I went that time to tell this stuff. But, but it will be in Belgium next year. And um, I will drop the link in a minute as well in the chat. Is there anything else people would like to talk about, whether it's about uh, the events, about guest configuration, about DSC, Azure Automation, DSC, or anything. Feel free to unmute yourself. Yeah, I have a question, uh, Greg. Uh, so why, why, I'm confused. Why for DC V3 ARM was chosen as a as a essentially language, which I mean, by being there specifically for this reason, because ARM was so horrible, and now we're just like going back, starting over again. Uh, can I fill that one? So, so the question is yeah. DSCV3 and uh, ARM template syntax. Is that the question really? Yes. No, so ARM template syntax is actually not necessarily intended for humans, but we need that as a way to pass, for example, from machine config to DSC or from other tools to DSC because it's, uh, it's well formed. Um, we have started some conversations, for example, with the BICEP team. Um, so hypothetically in some future, I'm not promising anything, but you know, um, the benefit of, of leveraging the ARM template ecosystem is that there's a bunch of rich tools already around that. Therefore, if you already know ARM templates, then you should be able to feel comfortable writing a DC configuration document. Or if you're a uh, user of ARM template tooling like BICEP or other tools, then hopefully there is a future where you can still use those same tools and generate a DC configuration. That's kind of why we adopted that syntax. Yeah, it's something that I think is important for people to keep in mind is that there's a difference between an interchange format and the friendliest format to author in. So the and the other big difference between ARM and uh, DSC is one of the big pain points for writing ARM is writing JSON. Uh, DSC v3, you can write it in YAML. Um, and writing YAML key value pairs is it's functionally very, very similar to the way that people will do uh, GitHub action definitions or uh, like Ansible playbooks. So the real piece there is that you get uh, you're going to have the ability to use functions uh, that'll be uh, handled at at runtime uh, to access different pieces of information instead of just relying on like YAML anchors and those kinds of things. Yeah, to, add, yeah. to, to what um, Steve was talking about with Bicep, we have had conversations about building a Bicep extension. Um, it will be a bit of work to get that done. And so I think first we'll get to code complete um, for DSC itself and then start looking at uh, those types of extensions. Because you could, well, you could do anything, I guess, but <laughs> I was thinking you you can you can cross compile and decompile between bicep and arm. So um, there's some opportunities there to make life a little bit easier. Yeah, another thing I want to highlight is we've put in some work on uh, enhanced authoring schemas. So VS Code actually has an extended vocabulary for schema definitions. So if you use the enhanced authoring schemas uh, pointed out in that document, um, you'll actually get a bunch of extra contextual help. Uh, and you'll also get uh, tons of snippets that will kind of scaffold things out for you more quickly. Um, right now, they're not resource aware, so it's not going to know like the the properties of the resources that you're using. Um, but that's a today problem. Uh, you'll get a lot more contextual information when you're authoring uh, the resources than you might be used to when you're using other tools. Or not when you're authoring resources, rather when you're authoring config documents, but also command manifests get the same sort of love. So. Does that answer the question? Uh, yes, thank you. Yes, so ARM is not the DSL, but if you use YAML, uh, it might feel much easier on basically even if you add a DSL above it that would write something that you want YAML to feed that DSL, then it probably would like something similar that what you can already do. So there's, we'll see what other DSLs like Bicep can bring, but it's already, you need to get the base before you can abstract away. 
Is there any other question? I should remind everyone that there's also um, call for papers always open for the DSC community if you want to present on anything or just open a subject for discussion. Feel free to uh, fill that up and then you could say, well, I would like to present. I will add the dates. We've got the dates on here until the end of this year, but then we will very soon um, add the dates for next year. It's if you if you if it's your first DSC community call, we have the community call every six weeks unless it's during the summer. Usually we have a quick break during the summer, obviously a break over Christmas. But if it's early December, we would maintain it. So I will share the DS, the call for the DSC community in a minute. Anything else to add? Daniel, you're on. I don't think I've got anything add to add. Right. I covered the storage DS, the DSC resources. I think, uh, yeah, really running again. DSC community always on the lookout for new contributors and and reviewers, and we love those contributions. We love those reviews. Even a documentation cre correction is valuable. So, yeah, please please jump in there. I'll I'll drop a link in the in the um, chat. I, I may have just the last question, which is a bit of a cheeky question, so you don't have to answer. And maybe that's more for Michael. Um, so, like, there's how many people are there from Microsoft around there? Like, I've seen today four, five of you, and I haven't checked the list yet. But you know, why do you expect there's that many people from from Microsoft? You know, in the DSC community, and you know what's happening? Because if you look at the market. You know, it doesn't seem very active at the moment. So, can you explain that? Uh, what What happened in the last year, two years, that has been absolutely awesome, is the number of teams at Microsoft that have started taking a uh, a new dependency on requirements for DSC. Uh, so, as an example, if you listened to the um, like the keynotes from the Microsoft Build conference this year and uh, learned about Dev Home and what's going on with that. Uh, it's essentially like you can put a YAML file in your GitHub repo that says if you're planning to contribute to this project and you, well, well part, a feature of Dev Home is this. Uh, if you're planning to contribute to the project and you want to load the same tools on your machine as what, uh, everyone who's an active contributor is, has agreed to use. Then you can use Dev Home, which under the covers is calling Winget. Uh, Winget, you know, on Windows, you can do things like Winget install VS Code, things like that. But what if you want to install many applications and then they have dependencies on each other and maybe they want to configure some settings in the app. So it's using uh, DSC under the covers underneath the Winget config command underneath Dev Home. Um, there's there's a bunch of new projects like that, and so it's it's uh, what we were hoping for all along is is encouraging is now encouraging uh, new development, which is very exciting. So you're saying it only took ten years? Yeah, a quarter <laughs> of my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would I would say uh, great dedication though. <laughs> So, but so would you but say there's a number of these like really awesome new projects happening, uh, and and that's really what we need is if you're interested in DSC v3 and you want to go take a look, there, there's so many active conversations happening in the issues list. It's almost like chat some days. But um, what we need at this point is for people to go build DSC.exe, try out scenarios they care about and then be part of the conversation because once Steve declares code complete, any changes after that are breaking changes to any of these partners and they'll be much more difficult to agree on how to implement because we'll have to play it safe. Right now we're at the phase where if you found a great reason that we're doing resources totally wrong, we can still throw it out and start over. Now, Steve, probably would be reluctant to do that because it would be a lot of his time, but you get the idea. Breaking changes are acceptable for now. Um, so now is a great time to give us feedback. Perfect. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. If you have, we can stop the recording probably now. And if you have some more questions, uh, feel free to unmute yourself and then share with us.